a half inch when I set the shoe on, and we're a half inch now from behind the toe. And that what foot? The right, right hind. Always do your foot. Okay. Now, Kelly, do your thing. One of the things that we just noticed on uh, the horse here is that uh, the shoe has stayed in position. It's a half inch back where uh, we had originally set it on the uh, right hind. And by scanning both of the bottom of the feet, what I'm seeing is a lot more heat on that right hind at the toe where the horse is short, sh short shot. It's kind of like what we've got going here is we have a well-supported hoof where we've supported the whole hoof on the left side. The bony column is supported in line and in balance. The other hoof, the right side, the right hind hoof with the, with the shoe set back is kind of like wearing a shorter shoe. It'd be no different than if you took your feet, uh, had one very comfortable shoe and one shoe that was cramped in an old tennis shoe, it's going to make your toes hurt. And that's what the shows, the, the thermal scams are showing us. The horse is hotter at the toe. He's having a lot more heat up there. Basically, he's unsupported and in in a very cramped shoe that's not allowing the blood flow that he needs or the support that his bony column needs overall. Uh, now, Ken, let me ask you something. If, say we're shoeing with a short shoe or turning the shoe around backwards, taking the toe off, or we're getting a horse out of balance or putting a natural balance shoe on, and we're putting roll toes and rocker toes. From what we can see, which we're going to do more research, this could make a heck of a lot of difference in the longevity of the horse. What do you think? Oh, Ralph, there's no way I could disagree with you on that. What we're looking at right now is just with this shoe set back, and again, um, looking at the natural balance techniques or what they refer to as the principles of setback, we found a massive amount of heel impact in there, which, you know, any good shoer is going to tell you, you're setting up an avicular situation just by messing around with something like that. But again, what have you done? You've changed the bony column. Exactly. And, you know, we've been saying that for the last 15 years down here at the research center. The main reason to shoe the horse is to keep the bony structure in alignment, wherein when the foot strikes the ground, the entire bony structure of the horse equally absorbs concussion. We've seen more and more horses that are so sore in the spine, and then the horse owner complains, especially when the horse is shod and brought in here with these natural balance or roll toes and rocker toes. You've got completely out of natural, and we've yet to define what natural is. So I guess the man upstairs, according to the horseshoe in the industry, evidently made a mistake when he made the horse. He wasn't figuring nobody was going to ever ride it, so he don't know much. So, But what I'm saying is, when you keep the horse back like he was the day he was born, I think the horse will live a good, long, healthy life. What do you think? Well, again, Ralph, there's no way I can disagree with you. You go back and you look at some of the historical perspective, and you look at some of the, some of the great horses that have won races, they're shod like they stand, and if you shoe that horse to what his bony column says, you will get the optimum performance out of that horse. Now, I have a question for you, Ralph. Watching this on the treadmill, what did you see that changed in the flight of that foot? I, I was behind the camera. I couldn't really get a, a look at it, but I want to I know what you saw. What I saw was, and I've seen articles, even by good shoers, and, you know, they'll say if you short shoe a horse, it makes the horse have a, a short stride. But what we saw here, until we get it on the video and, and slow it down where we can see it close, it was obvious the right foot would, had a long stride instead of a short stride. And he was actually, uh, when the foot struck, he was striking the bottom shoe. He was actually forging, or as a horse owner calls it, clicking. So, but the left foot, it wasn't clicking. He was actually more in stride with his normal stride. But once we slid that shoe back a half inch on the right, that would be like putting a natural balance shoe on or putting a rocker toe or roll toe. It actually made the horse long stride from what I could see. So we'll see once we get it in slow motion and so on and slow it down and get it on uh, uh, video where we can actually see it and see more of what the horse is doing. But it's remarkable what we can see once we get a horse where we, because in reality, if you're watching a horse, if you're out shooting it, you're only getting a glimpse when the horse goes by. That's exactly you know, right. Ain't no human eye that good. Let's, hey, give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're exactly right about that and being able to actually get them in a controlled environment and see what they're doing. This is probably some of the first types of studies that, that have been done like this. And the slow motion, I, I can't wait to see it in slow motion because I do want to see how that foot was striking. Uh, it appears to me that there's actually a rub mark on that long toe. You know what amazes me? We got thousands of horseshoers that are in our country today and and you know they don't even come down to see what's going on here and this is the only research center actually in the world studying farrier science 
It's amazing. They think it's just flatten the foot, nail the shoe, and how quick you can get it on there. And they never understand. And we proved, as CNN came down here in 1991 and filmed, I proved that I could take a wide horse, base wide horse, and I could shoe him incorrectly off balance and lateral immediately and create in speed cutting and make the horse fall, fall. He failed two out of five times when he was in full gallop. And that's amazing. If you know, we start getting a lot of injuries from our shoeing, then we're gonna get in a lot of problems. We wanna keep our horse owners safe. We wanna keep our horses sound. That's the long and short of it. Yeah, and that makes sense to me. Well, we've just seen just a small bit of the research that goes on here at the Research Center. And I'm just excited to see everything that's in this grammar school DVD that you keep talking about. So what is so important about this grammar school DVD and how can farriers use it? Well, one of the greatest things, I think, is business. They can use it. There's a lot of things they can use. First, they need to educate themselves more and understand what, what it, it helps them to learn how to talk about the farrier's work and where he's going and why he's going there and what happens if he don't go there. Second, he can take this and you know, you have a lot of horse owners, a lot of the farriers understand what I'm talking about. The horse owners trying to tell them how to shoe a horse. They think all you do is flatten foot and nail the shoe on. You can actually take this DVD and you let the horse owner watch the DVD. And by doing that, what you're doing they're getting somebody else's opinion where they've actually did research. It's not something picked up or handed down or we've heard about. You're actually getting to see some actual research. And it's, it's on a grammar school level. In other words, it's like the first grade. It's carrying you through all the way up through grammar school. And it gives a person an idea of what shoes do, what they don't do, how it affects the horse. It gives a lot of basic knowledge and we use a lot of illustrations where it's not so dad blasting boring. So I think a lot <laughs> That's of... That's good to hear. <laughs> well, a lot of horse owners, you know, it's boring, really. Doing clinics a lot, I have found out that when you get out there to do a clinic with horse owners, it, they get bored real quick. People want to be entertained. They want uh, simple stuff. Get to the point. And I think this, this... We have done it over and over so many times. And I hope we've got it this time. Well, how can we get a hold of this DVD? Okay, simplest way, it's free. And the, the guys that, that are involved in the research, the horse owners, they have a lot of them have made up money to help do these things. Mm -hmm. A lot of them have helped here to Research Center. All they do, if they order, is pay shipping and handling. And, of course, a lot of people say, well, that's no. What that does, it pays for the actual person having to put it together. It pays for the editing, all the things that has to go into it. So, in reality, it's just you're not making any money off of it to a right. point. And all the money that we do make goes right back into research. Well, that sounds great. I think people need to get out there and uh, order that Grammar DVD now. You bet.